Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when you try to print a object in Kotlin. And the reason we're going to look at this is because this is going to be useful later on, shortly, in understanding init blocks and secondary constructors. So I've got my main function already. Let's create a class person. And for our purposes here, I don't really need to give it any properties. In fact, if I'm not planning to give the class any properties or methods, I don't actually need either the round brackets or the curly brackets. This is a valid class just by itself. It doesn't do anything really useful, but an empty class like this can have uses in certain contexts. Now let's create a couple of objects from this class. So I'm going to say val person1 equals person and val person2 equals person. So here we've got two different person objects. It doesn't matter that it has no properties or methods. These are still two perfectly valid objects. And I want to show you what happens when we try to print them. Let's do print ln person1. And we'll duplicate that with command D, probably control D in Windows in IntelliJ IDEA. And we'll have person2. And let's run it. And we can see that we get this. So we've got the name of the class followed by an at sign. But what's this? Some kind of number. And you might initially think that's a unique ID that uniquely identifies each object. In fact, it, it isn't that at all. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to copy these two lines and we're going to print out something called the hash code. So let's call the dot hash code method on each of these objects. Now you might be wondering where this hash code method comes from. Well, in fact, there are certain methods that every class in Kotlin automatically has, and we're going to be looking at them later on. But for the moment, all you need to know is that this method obtains something called the hash code, which is a integer. Let's run it. At first glance, the numbers that we get look nothing like these numbers here. So these are hash codes for our objects. And it is important to realize that the hash code is not a unique ID. We will look at it later on in the course. The hash codes of two objects can be equal if the objects have the same properties. But even when hash codes are equal, it doesn't mean you've got objects that are the same. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, in this particular context, I am going to treat those as if the hash codes were unique identifiers of each object. These hash codes are going to allow us to tell which objects which. However, these hash codes are being printed in the decimal number system. This is the familiar system we use, which uses 10 different symbols ranging from 0 to 9, which we're all familiar with. But these are actually numbers in the hexadecimal system, which uses 16 different symbols. It uses the digits 0 to 9 and augments them with the letters A to F. To see a hexadecimal representation of these hash codes, we can call a method of the integer that this hash code method returns. So this is a method that belongs to the int class. Let's write dot two hex string. And this gets red underlining. When I hover over it, I can click this opt in for experimental standard lib, standard library that is, API. I'm going to click that. Now, if this is removed in a future version of Kotlin and you can't access this method, don't worry about it. Because although it is very important to try code for yourself, in this case, my main purpose is just to explain something to you here. I think it's more likely that this method will still be around in the future, but you won't have to click that link to opt into experimental features. Notice that what that has actually done, clicking that link, is it's actually added a little bit of code to the top here that enables experimental features here. Let's do the same for the person2 hash code. And now let's run this. And we can see that in fact, these hash codes are exactly what are getting printed out up here. So by default, if you print a reference to an object, doesn't matter whether it's got properties or not, or what the properties are, you will get by default, the name of the class that the object belongs to, followed by an at sign, 
followed by the object's hash code. However, we can override that behavior so that we print something that's a bit more intelligible and normally useful. And we'll look at that later on in the course. I just wanted to show you this here because it's going to be useful for understanding the this keyword. And that in turn will be useful for understanding init blocks and secondary constructors. So that's it for this tutorial. Until next time, happy coding.